Hi, welcome to How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. Based on my book of the same name, this podcast is here to help you have the wedding of your dreams and not the wedding that other people are putting pressure on you to have. I'm Ross, I'm a wedding photographer, passionate about embracing diversity and equality in the wedding industry. And each week I'm going to be talking to different experts to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. So regardless of who you're marrying, where you're marrying and how old you're going to be when you get married, sit back, relax and find out how to have a wedding as individual as you are. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, the podcast. Today's topic is conflict, confusion and keeping in control, which might not sound anything like wedding planning, or it might sound just like your wedding planning, depending on (laughs) how it's going. Um, But we're joined by a very smiley and uh, ever-friendly guest today, Um, and she's going to give you lots and lots of tips for dealing with any conflicts or difficulties that you are facing when dealing with whether it's friends, family members or wedding suppliers themselves and having you to just keep calm, stay in control um, and come to the perfect resolution for any dilemmas you are having in the build up to your big day. So welcome Emma, tell us a bit more about what you do, introduce us to this Three letters that people absolutely. might not have heard of <laughs> and, what, and what it means and how it's going to relate. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm an NLP trainer. So that stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Don't switch off, don't switch off. Yes, it's be fine. keep on going, keep on going. <laughs> Stay with us. <laughs> so basically it's understanding how your brain works. It's performance psychology, um, which sounds all very fancy, but basically it's about enabling you to be more successful, Yep. And to be happier, to be more in control of your life, which is obviously the subject of today. Yes. So yes, absolutely. So that's what I do. Brilliant. Because I think weddings, as exciting as they are, you can start to feel a little bit overwhelmed and out of control. Absolutely. You get lots of conflicting information and yep. advice and you feel like you're running out of time or should you do things this way or that way. So I think having someone like you, Emma, today is really going to help a lot of people to just feel in control and stay calm and get the wedding that they want, which this podcast is all about. Absolutely. Without upsetting a lot of people. Yes. 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 So that you're still friends at the end. Yeah, you haven't diminished your guest list by about fifty <laughs> percent. Exactly. Yeah. And you're still speaking to your family. Yeah. All of those things. Brilliant. <laughs> so by the end of today's podcast, myself and the lovely Emma McNally are going to find out what NLP is and some of the basic principles of NLP. We're going to learn how we can use these principles to deal with any aspect of wedding planning, the wedding day or married life itself that is causing Mm. conflict or negatively impacting how you feel. Absolutely. And we're going to share some simple NLP exercises that you can use when your wedding day starts to feel a little overwhelming. And I have promised Emma some lemon cake at Absolutely. the end of this. So if it's not useful, <laughs> she doesn't get any. So oh, that's okay. her incentive. Okay, that's, that's her little incentive. carrot dangling <laughs> over her. So hopefully it's going to give us lots of uh, good quality content today. Absolutely. So Emma, first of all, tell us a little bit more about what NLP is and how you came to be such a passionate and fantastic NLP practitioner. Mm, indeed. So NLP was created um, back in the 70s by modelling excellence. So what they did is they looked at people who were absolutely exceptional in their field, worked out how they were so good, and then created models and tools and looked at the underlying principles that they had to be successful so that we could then actually have that same experience ourselves. So basically shortcutting to success, which is pretty cool, right? Yeah, really cool. (laughs) So yeah, so I discovered it about eight, ten years ago now. Um, And I was 
in a work situation that was less than easy, shall we say. And <laughs> We've all been there. All been there, all had one of those. <laughs> so whether it's weddings or work or whatever. And my boss turned to me and said, oh, I think you should go and learn some NLP. And I went, NL who? <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Um, and so I went off and did some, some study on it, went on a course and blew me away. Totally, totally changed my life um, at work situation that I had struggled with was exactly the same but the way I felt about it was different the way I managed to manage it yes yeah. and that's important today we're not telling you how to win over certain people or win arguments or get your own way it's just dealing with situations and how you respond and feel about them isn't it so it's the, having the power it's exactly. in your hands. it's all about giving you back the power to be in control of how you feel yes so when things maybe are let going less well for you on that wedding day. So my own experience, my wedding day, when I forgot my bouquet, for example, <laughs> and then my dad had to go running back and get it. You know, actually, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. It was okay because you were still feeling okay within yourself about it. Yeah. So that's why it's so powerful is because you can't change absolutely everybody around you, but you can change you. Yeah. So that's why it's so very, very cool. Yeah. And I think if people just take away one thing, it's you're in control of how you feel. How you feel. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. So what changes have you seen in your clients who have attended your courses or worked with you on a one-to-one -one basis? Yeah, loads of stuff. So we do all sorts of things from anxiety, people right. who want to overcome sort of anxiety and worries and that sort of thing that may have some beliefs that are holding them back, right. um, such as not being good enough, for example, or many others. Yes. So working with them to actually have new beliefs that are more empowering and to be able to get rid of some negative emotions. Do a lot in terms of traumas, okay. post-traumatic stress disorder, that sort of thing, but also phobias. Oh. Flying, for example, yes. needles, spiders, you name it. Work with lots of people in terms of that. But also to set some really exciting and amazing goals for people so that they have that new energy of yeah. wanting to achieve things. And also more recently, I worked with somebody who was running a wedding. Oh, really? So yeah, she'd come to me because her friend had asked her to to basically do the whole thing from all of the readings to the speeches to everything. Oh, I know. And so yeah, so spent lots of time with her um, and some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. Actually, oh, in terms fantastic. of anchoring, we're going to be covering for her. Um, it's a big responsibility, her. isn't it? Absolutely, and she just wanted to do it so superbly for her friends. Yeah, so, yeah. And I think if you're awesome. planning your own wedding. You know, you've probably never done it before. So there is going to be times where exactly. you feel like you don't know what you're doing or you're a yeah. bit anxious or you don't know what decision to make. Absolutely. And and it seems with many things, but weddings in particular, that everybody is an expert. Yes. Yes. yes totally. So Aunt Maud can't sit next to Uncle Bert and this <laughs> can't happen and that must happen. And you've got to be here and you've got to be there. And, and actually it's your day. And so yes. it's learning how to deal with those so that you still feel okay yourself. Yeah, and, and that's central to these podcasts and yeah. why I write the book is to make Absolutely. sure it's you remain an individual and we celebrate you as a couple. Absolutely, and, you, and know, you don't get just... swept away. Exactly, <laughs> swept away out, all, swept all, at, away. Sea all in, at sea in your wedding outfit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. So we've talked about it a little bit. So we've, how NLP can be applied to wedding planning when we're going a little bit deeper Good. in a second. Yeah. What about married life? <laughs> It's not all, I hate to break it Love to you guys, it. it's not all going to be nice. honeymoon, perfect, yeah. nights in, <laughs> nights out. There are going to be a few rough patches. Absolutely. So what can NLP so do for NLP, married life? Yeah, absolutely amazing because the, the L in it is linguistics. So it's right. all not about, love. No, well, <laughs> you're a linguistic love. Oh, we're, 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 we're you brand. and me. Yeah, that's another podcast. <laughs> that's another one. That's that's later. Um, but yeah, so it's all about understanding each other, communication. So I do some talks on how to talk your partner's language, for example, okay. and understanding what your 
partner's preferences and then being flexible enough to be able to go around their side and talk in the language that they need and show them how you still love them yes. in a way that resonates. So I do quite a lot in terms of, you know, what your preference is, what your partner's preference is, yeah. how to be flexible, but also conflict management. Yeah. yeah. Because you come from a different background. Yeah. I, I no two people are the same. No, that's true. And, I, and when I start going out with uh, my partner, um, I would get him really super romantic cards and presents. Yep. And he wasn't always totally excited. <laughs> I hope he's not listening. Cause he'll, he'll yes. say, I loved everything I you loved bought me. I loved everything. Um, Absolutely. And then he would get me like cards that are a bit jokey or presents that are like a bit silly. And I was like, uh. oh. But now we switched. So he gets me romantic stuff because he knows that, and words and that means things to me, like a nicely Absolutely. written card, etc. whether it's his words or whatever's already printed. And then I get him cards with a Lego one or a cartoon character yes. or something. Yeah. Because it's that switch. We were kind of putting our our expectations and our likes and, yep. and dislikes onto each other. So we've now we've kind of we've got it right. You've we've got it right. It. So well, yeah. Well that's the thing, isn't it? You come from your own default position. Yeah. And so we do a lot of exploring of what your own default position is. Yeah. So that you know your own preference. So whether you're a visual person or kinesthetic, which is about feeling or doing things for people, yeah. or auditory. So hearing, I love you, for example, is that what you're looking for? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So it's understanding the main preferences, using your senses, and then being able to work out what your partner's is so that you can meet those. Because at the beginning, you know, that wildly romantic <laughs> first date moment, we tend to be looking to fulfil all of those. So we tend to try and look nice, one would hope. <laughs> say the right thing yeah yeah undivided attention you, you might even hold hands or do something together yeah we go out for dinner and have some nice food so, so it's again it's your, yeah. it's your taste um and also smell you hopefully smell nice yes. so it's using all five of your senses so the visual auditory kinesthetic which is your feeling olfactory and gustatory so smell and taste so you do all of those and for the first little while it's called the honeymoon period, right? Where everyone's <laughs> you making... You keep it up, yeah. yeah you, you, you keep it up. And then you get to a point where you're like, oh, I'll just do what's favourite for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put these old jeans on I'll today. I'll put these jeans on. I'll just, you know, have my hair in a different way and all of this sort of thing. And what's, what's fab is if you know what the other person's preference is, all you need to do is keep that one up. Well, yeah, we're all that's fine. very true. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, they do love me. Or rather than going, hang on a minute, you're, you're saying you love me, but you haven't done anything for me recently. Yeah. yeah. Do you see what yeah. I mean? So it's understanding that. So really helps in terms of relationships, communication, and how to, to have a really healthy relationship. Definitely. It'll help in your long term relationship. Definitely. But also, actually, if you're quite self aware as a couple, when you're then talking to suppliers, Absolutely. And they're trying to get to know you or asking what you want. And they should be asking what you want. If they're not, yeah. run a mile. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, <someone. laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, then you can answer them and say, well, he likes doing this and I like doing that. Or we do like holding hands sometimes. So maybe we'll have some photos of us holding hands. Absolutely. I like it when we're giggling. So can we have some photos of us having a laugh? Yeah. And, and you can work with suppliers that way, can't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. And just um, the other one of the big things is not being judgmental, but rather just being curious about that other person's perspective. Yeah. Because as soon as you take that out, it's like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, tell me a bit about how you're thinking that way or yeah. what's going on for you. Yeah. It just takes all of the angst out. Um, it, it does. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Especially definitely. with suppliers. If they're turning around and say, oh, you need to have this. You can yeah. turn around and go, okay, I'm curious. Tell, tell me what... what what, for what reason should I have that? Yeah. You know, what's that going to do for the wedding? What's that going to do for us as a couple? You know, and you can have that wider conversation. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Before we move on, you gave a really good example. I went on one of Emma's courses and then I nabbed her <laughs> for the podcast. So. He did. It's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really interesting. And you gave a really good example. I hope your husband won't mind you sharing of when he was cooking for you oh yeah okay so my gorgeous husband um sean bless him and he will at some point probably be listening so um so yeah it's really it's really interesting so he's a broad geordie and talking about communication for the first three months i don't think i said anything apart from sorry 
pup. pup. What, <laughs> what did, did you, you say? say? <laughs> you know, I had to do Vera lessons. To get, you know, <laughs> hilarious. So, yeah, so I um, walked into the kitchen and there he was making a curry. Okay, and so he's stirring a, curries on the on the the hob, like cooking yeah. away, and he's making the salad and he's chopping and everything. I walk in and think, oh, he's busy making a salad. I know what? I'll go over and stir the curry. <laughs> so I went over and stirred the curry, and he went, "Am I not doing it right, honey?" <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, hang on a second. So his interpretation was like, obviously that I was you were I was judging taking over. Him, yeah. I was judging." But actually, I was like, oh, no, no, I just thought I was being helpful. Yeah. And so what's lovely is then to be able to turn to him and say, okay, what did you think I meant by that? Because communication doesn't actually always have to be verbal, right? It's yeah, doing as well. Exactly. And and he was like, well, I thought you were basically saying that I wasn't doing it right. And I was like, no, no, I didn't mean <laughs> that at all. It may come over that way, but um, now I understand from your point of view, yeah, I would have been upset if that's what... You'd interpret it as, yes. but actually, if you come around my side, what I actually was meaning was actually you're already doing the salad, you're already doing the rice, you've already washed up. Maybe I should do something. Do something, <laughs> yeah. You know, Your token stir. my token to, yeah. stir to the contribution for dinner. You know how it is. <laughs> so yeah, and that's where it. So rather than a row, yeah. We then turn around and go, okay, so what do you think I meant by that? Yeah. Hang on a second. And going around their side first. Yeah. And rather than like the angst and then saying, oh, okay, yes, I would be angry too if that, or yeah. I would have had that reaction. But Brilliant. So that leads us perfectly mm. then to uh, if there is conflict when you're planning a wedding, maybe with your partner, maybe when you're choosing the venue or table decorations or favours. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about a technique you can use to yeah. sort of come to an agreement and agree on those those decisions that you're making. Yeah, perfect. So we've got a beautiful technique. It's called chunking. And basically, it's when you chunk up. And I have to be very careful how I say that. <laughs> Not chuck up, chunking, chunking up. So basically, what, what happens is if there's a conflict, it tends to be the natural thing is to take sides. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to win, you want to win, and there's a sort of conflict goes yeah. on. So what we have is this beautiful technique that you look at a higher level and you say, okay, so for what purpose do you want whatever it is that you're talking about? Okay. Right. So what's yeah. that doing for you? If you had that, what would that do for you? What would that give you? Yeah. Okay. So you chunk up on both sides till you get to what's called an agreement frame okay. where you have the same thing that you want. Right. So I'll give you an example and then we can apply it to the yeah. wedding. So I was a consultant for two directors, okay? One director wanted to sell their business and the other director wanted to grow the business. Right. And I was the consultant in the middle trying to resolve it. Lovely. Which was fun. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> <it. laughs> And so what we did is we looked at for what purpose did they want to sell the business. Right. And actually it was for financial security for him, but also for his family. Okay. His family was in the business. And the other side, we chunked up and so said, what was the purpose he wanted to grow it? Financial security for him and his family. Right. So okay. this is then, do you see how that's exactly the same? Yeah, they want the same thing. They want the same thing. So then if you're at an agreement frame to say, actually, we both want the same thing, which is financial security. Yes, we could sell it. Yes, we could um, grow it. But also we could do a management buyout or we could restructure or we could, or we could, or we could. Yeah. So it's the same thing. So if you're saying, well, I want chocolate almonds for my favours. Show my age, and the other one saying <laughs> chocolate what? Chocolate bunny he's <laughs> and the other one saying no, no, I want the mini tip tree jam things. Yeah, yeah. Rather than arguing jams and almonds, chunk up to the next level. So, for what purpose do you want each of those? Till you get to a point where they're in agreement. So maybe yeah. it's because you want to provide a gift to your guests that reminds them of the wedding or yeah. to thank them for coming, whatever yeah. it might be. Then when you're on the same side, you go, okay, so provided whatever we choose does that, yeah. we could do jam, we could do almonds, we could do chocolate, we could do, we could do, we could do, and you yeah. have much more choice. Yeah. And so it's rather than and I suppose, mm. sorry, you're yeah. the expert, but I suppose also it's, and we've talked about this before in the podcast, getting that perspective. So if you are sort of stuck in a rut, even if it's something yeah. like the venue or photographer or whatever, 
you, you if you chunk up you'd eventually get to the point of we just want a wonderful day and everyone enjoy it absolutely then you're like actually is it worth Absolutely. coming to blows over this exactly. one thing and to celebrate love and, and whatever it yeah, is absolutely. and I mean it's a great tool for mediation and basically so long as both of the you know, the parties want to resolve it yes to start with yes that's and if you get married you, 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 yeah. you would hope <laughs> you would hope <laughs> <laughs> you would hope but yes you're exactly right and then what happens is you put that perspective in of does it matter really yeah whether we have you know, jam or, or almonds. almonds. Yeah. Actually, it's probably more important that actually we have a, a great day. Yeah. So it just takes it to a level of perspective. Yeah, that's really so, fantastic. But it's really fun. And you can use that with everything. Okay. Yeah. So not only your wedding day, not only with the suppliers. Yeah. But yeah. it can be, you know, I don't know, later on down the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do we Anything. paint the room pink or green? You know? Yeah. No, it's that's brilliant. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff. Brilliant. Okay, so what about people that feel really overwhelmed with the whole process or maybe they're specific? Specific? Is that that's right? That's the one. It, it is. is. Specific? Yes, it is. I can speak, you can't can. I? I've, I've made up so many words doing these podcasts. <laughs> talking to, I said the other day. Yeah. It's a mixture of spoken to and talk to. Talking to. Talking to. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? Yes. So, yes. So, they <laughs> people might feel overwhelmed about the specific yes. aspects. So, it might be walking down the aisle, saying yep. their speeches, saying their vows, yeah, yeah, yeah. having their photo taken even. Yeah. Um, or feeling overwhelmed just by the whole thing. It's too much to think about. Yeah. What techniques, what can NLP do for those people? So, there's not necessarily a conflict but yep. they're just feeling anxious yeah, yeah, yeah. and not yeah. feeling good. Yeah, okay, fab. So in terms of a technique for, for the emotion side of things, yeah. um, we have a beautiful technique called anchoring. Okay. okay. So anchoring occurs naturally. So I don't know whether you've ever heard of a, a particular song that maybe took you back to a particular time. Yes, yes. there's a song that there's reminds song. me of uh, being at my grandparents' house, oh, actually. Perfect. And I heard it randomly in a shop a few months ago. It was quite emotional. I had to leave the shop because yeah. I was just there on the rug, and suddenly I had all these memories of the cabinet and the jar of sweets and the little yeah. embers in the fire, and it, it really brought it back. All these memories all these in memories. this detail I didn't know yeah. existed in my head, yeah. um, and it was this one song that I've probably never heard for years and years. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know exactly. And all what of you those mean, but feelings come back. Don't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Just that feeling of. I don't know, being loved and that excitement of being there and, Perfect. yeah, wonderful. Great example. So that's where an auditory, so a sound, a, a piece of music, your neurons are connected, that piece of music, to feeling great, yeah. feeling loved. Okay? So we have lots of connections in our brains like that and it's naturally occurring. Yeah. So maybe a smell. Yeah, of lemon cake, for example. <laughs> yes, there is a smell of lemon cake. There is a smell of lemon cake yes. down here. And, or baking bread or something like that yes. will take you to that particular time and feel good. Yeah. Um, songs are, are a really good one, but you might see something. Yeah? Yeah. You might colours see or colours anything, yeah. or you might see a particular sign. Yeah, you know, if you're travelling, for example, and you see a sign, you know, Welcome to Essex or something that might that might spark something. That's for true. You. Yeah. yeah. So again, with the anchors, you you can have it visual, auditory, kinesthetic, or factory, or gustatory. So smell or taste. Okay. Yeah. So have you ever tasted something? Like that? I've tasted that before. I can't quite put my finger. Yeah. There, but yeah. it's a good feeling. Yeah, definitely. Okay? It's a bit like. Cinnamon and Christmas is yes. a classic one, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Absolutely. It yeah. takes you to that moment. Or, or sherry takes you back to well, you know, when you're younger. Well, that's you, love. I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not promoting drinking not? at all okay. on this. No, 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 of course not, Of course, of course not. No, no. No, but like yeah, that old-fashioned exactly Christmas, yeah, like, definitely. you know, nobody, well, I don't drink sherry, but if there's just the smell of sherry, yeah, it takes me true. back to a younger time or, or snowballs or whatever it might be. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so... That's the sort of, that's what happens. So it happens naturally, but what you can do is you can create yourself a beautiful anchor for the day. Right. Okay. So what you're doing is you're creating deliberately an anchor of calm, for example. Oh, fantastic. So what happens is when you're feeling calm, you can either, you know, whether it's a piece of music or whether it's a touch, maybe, you know, your earlobe or something like that, the more you listen to it and make that connection if you do it over and over and over 
then through classic conditioning, you have connected those neurons together. Okay. So if you think about it in terms of like you ring the doorbell, the doorbell rings. Yeah? yeah, that's what you're doing. Yeah. So you're connecting either when you hear something or you say something to yourself or you smell that smell to something that feels good. Yeah. 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 And if you do that over and over, what then happens is if you're just about to walk in, for example, and you've anchored, I don't know, on a knuckle, you could press that knuckle and immediately feel calm. So rather than at that moment going, oh, I need to, I need to feel calm. I, yeah. I need to do that. <laughs> you know, it happens automatically. So that's wow. a very cool way of doing yeah. it. Yeah, and if you are sort of a naturally anxious person or you you know that you're likely to feel quite stressed yeah. on the day or leading up to it, then uh, building those anchors, building how, those how anchors. long would is then, how long is a piece of spring in terms of how long it takes to, to sort of build can those anchors? It can happen really quickly. So okay. you need to be totally in that state and you need to do it right. before. So okay. if you imagine state sort of peaking and then, then sort of ebbing away, yeah. you need to do it as the state is growing. As it's right, getting stronger okay. and stronger. I see. All right. The other thing to do is think about the language you use as well. Because our brains are, are very, very powerful, absolutely incredible. The one thing they're not so good at doing is processing negation. Okay. okay. So, what I mean by that is the knots in this world. Right. Okay. So people come to me and they say, right, well, I don't want to be anxious and I don't want to be worried and I don't want this and I don't want that. Guess what happens? Because <laughs> the brain is a bit like Google. If you've ever put into a Google search, a, you know, a, not a pink elephant, it won't bring up the rest of the internet. It will bring up a pink elephant. So our brains have to think of it before they can not think of it. Yeah. yeah. So what's not anxious? It could be calm. It could be happy. It could be love. It could be all sorts of things. Right. So if you're actually saying, okay, I feel calm, rather than, I don't want to feel anxious. Yeah. Because your little RAS, your reticular activating system, your brain, basically, this part of your brain, is looking, basically, to please you and to, to interpret what you're saying. So if you say what you want rather than what you don't want, that really helps too. Wow. And to change your physiology. Okay, tell us a bit so, more about changing yeah, our physiology. Yeah, changing your physiology. So basically, if you're just about to walk down the aisle and you're feeling slightly nervous, stand up how you would stand if you felt super confident. Yeah. Okay? Say those things through your mind rather than, oh, I don't want to be anxious. Say, I'm super confident. Yes. I feel great. Yeah? And actually, um, because I spoke in another podcast, sorry to interrupt. No, go for it. I spoke in another podcast um, about feeling confident and having the right suppliers around you that that lift you up. Yes. But I also said I noticed a difference between pre-wedding shoots and the wedding day because their outfit is different. Yes. And their hair's done. Um, and they've got suits on if they're guys or dresses or whoever they are that's getting married, yes. whoever they're marrying. I've seen a, a real difference in how they come across in the photos. Yeah. So would it be a good idea to maybe say wear those things before the day yep. and say those words? Absolutely. And, and combine it all so that when you put your clothes put on you you automatically Absolutely. feel more confident yeah definitely definitely so i heard a beautiful story of a friend of mine's um little niece was going to school for the first time and you know how when you're tiny you have those um like comforters you know the little yes. blankety things yeah. and she was really worried about going to to school um and this comforter basically was an anchor for her for comfort okay right and so what they did is they cut it up and they sewed it on the inside of her uniform oh and she went to school as happy as larry because she had that touching her skin that anchor was there the whole time that's incredible idea it just and it works so beautifully so in the same way i do um, it's called a circle of excellence, so you can put many, many different resources into that circle. But I do things like magic shoes because I like to have fun and I love shoes. Okay. Um, actually <laughs> being able to then step into all of those resources for yourself, almost like a bubble, as it were, of yeah. all of these great resources so that you can actually enjoy the whole day. Wow, because you can then just radiate who you want to be and just be yourself, truly yourself, without having any of those old 
negative things happening. And That's we do fantastic. something called collapsing anchors, so we can get rid of the old ones too. I feel like a chemistry yeah, yeah, test, you yeah. know, that whole acid alkaline. Yeah. What we do is we neutralize those so that you feel resourceful. Brilliant. Which is really cool. That's really, it's really very, cool. very super yeah. cool. And I think, as we always say at wedding days, that one day where you, you want to feel amazing. You want to feel incredible. You know, someone is marrying you because they love you exactly as you are. Absolutely. So they think you're pretty damn awesome. Exactly. So you should be feeling you pretty damn be awesome feeling, yourself. And, and all of these tools then help to support you feeling even more awesome. Yeah. So that's what's so beautiful. And you can use them, obviously, during your married life and in other situations too. Yeah. So that's what's so cool. And actually, that should give you, you know, wedding planning is a big deal. So you've dealt with all these different suppliers. Absolutely. You know, on the day, people are looking at you. They're all there to support you to support you but they are looking at you see the center of attention yeah you know if you can deal with that you can deal with a lot of other stuff afterwards absolutely really. absolutely so true yeah and especially with those tools yeah brilliantly right let's go over cool. a few of a few of your tips through the tips absolutely so we've talked about nlp and some of the basic principles so let's just recap on those techniques. Yeah. So we've got chunking. Chunking. So that's when you chunk up to get to what's called an agreement frame. So when you're on the same side, yeah. agreeing what, what it is that you want to go for, the bigger picture. Yeah. Why whatever it is you're arguing about is important to yeah. both of you. To, and you might have to chunk up quite high. I was going to say there's probably it's a few not always levels. just one thing. It's it not might always be, one yeah. level. It could be. So if you imagine like a family tree. Right, okay. Think of it that way. Yeah. All right. And if you put in, I don't know, if you looked at it, that hierarchy kind of thing. So if you've got like cars and planes, you could chunk up to the next level, which is transport. Right. And then the next level, movement. And the next level, which you see what I oh, mean? Oh, I see. Yeah. So if you think about favours along. So it might get to the level of we both want to get married. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that, and then um, f- for what purpose? Yeah. Well, because we love each other. Yeah. To see what I mean. And so you might have to jump right up to the top of actually, we love each other. Okay, so let's find another alternative that still meets that positive attention, that top higher level of what it's all about. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So it's keeping that. keeping sight of that at all times and using that so that you're on the same side to find a solution. It's pretty cool. That's I love that. Very one. cool. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, that's a very excellent. Cool one. That's a very. So cool. we had chunking, and then we had anchoring. Anchoring. Which Absolutely. we've just spoken about, but a quick yeah. recap quick on anchoring. Recap. The lemon cake is coming, but a quick recap first. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's where you anchor lemon cake. No. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, this is about making sure beforehand and well, well beforehand. Start now. Doesn't matter when your wedding is. Start now. Right. Creating those anchors, those resource anchors for yourself in terms of confidence or calm, whatever it is. So when you're feeling that, when it's naturally occurring, just as it builds up, you can either touch your earlobe or a knuckle or that sort of thing. Or anchor it on a ring. Loads of people do rings, especially on your wedding day. Is that strange? Because I've seen a lot of even famous people or public figures Absolutely. when they're talking you use their ring what do you think so, they're doing yeah right? okay. this is the inside secrets <laughs> yeah to public speaking is that's that's yeah. what they tend to be doing it's because a, it is it's subtle, isn't it it's not like yeah. all they're shaking or all you know Absolutely. it's just uh ah. and then you're instantly in that state yeah of calmness yeah yeah instantly or whatever it is you've anchored brilliantly Confidence. and we talked about the l in nlp the linguistics, linguistics the so language. not just linguistics but all those senses and how they relate to your lifelong marriage after the wedding so let's just Absolutely. recap on that a little bit yeah so it's understanding that we process and we communicate using all five of our senses okay one of the presuppositions so the principles that sits behind nlp is you can't not communicate Oh, okay. You cannot not communicate. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, so that's no matter true. what, you're communicating. Yeah. So even if you're sitting there in silence saying, I'm not saying a thing, you're saying something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably saying a lot, actually, yeah. if you're doing that. <laughs> exactly. And so it's understanding what your partner's preference is in terms of, and there's ways to do that, either listening by the, the what we call the predicates, the words that they use, or easier, shortcut for everybody, just ask them. Mm. How do you know you're loved? Is it because... 
I do something for you, such as, I don't know, stay with the cubby. <laughs> <laughs> is it because you want to hear that you're loved? Is it because you want to see? So like gifts or, or what is yeah. it? How do you know when you feel totally loved? Yeah. And once you know what the other person is, all you need to do is then be able to make sure that you keep that one up. You keep communicating in that way yeah. to them. Yeah. So, for example, let me give you a quick example. I'm very visual, right. whereas my husband's very kinesthetic. Okay? okay. So if I was going to show him something, for me, I would want to show him what it would look like. Right. That wouldn't work for him. He needs to come and do it. Okay. I need to take him there and walk it through with him. Right. Yeah. yeah. Does Makes that sense. make sense? Yeah, totally. Whereas I would imagine you're quite visual. Because of the job you yeah, do. Pretty so if I had an idea, I would want to show you and I'd sketch it out. Yes. Yeah? And I would yes. show you what it looks like. If somebody's auditory, you'd want to tell them what yes. it's all about. They want to hear how it sounds. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. Absolutely. So that's where if you know what your partner is, then even just things like... I don't know, I found an amazing venue for our wedding. Oh, really? Well, if they're not visual, showing them a picture's not it. Come on, let's go and visit. Yes. If they're kinesthetic. That's, yeah. Or if they're auditory, let me tell you all about it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because what happens is they're, you're then talking their preference, so the barriers go down and they, they you're talking it. their language. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you sense. see what I mean? Yeah. So it's a bit like if you go to France... Speaking a little bit of French rather than shouting in English. <laughs> it's like, I'll show you another picture. And they're like, I don't get pictures. No, I'll show you another one. And it's like, no, no, don't take me there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me walk around. Do you yeah. see what I mean? No, that's brilliant. Brilliant just, advice. It's, yeah. just, it's a super way of just having a really good communication. And again, another one that you can use with family as well yeah. as your partner. I with suppliers so. as well. Yeah, so if you're working with somebody who you know is visual, nine times out of ten photographers are, um, <laughs> they, you know, showing them a picture of the venue is is helpful rather than just telling them that. Yeah, yeah, that that's very true. It's very true. So that's and, it, and the communication is key because if neither of you are visual and you're working with a photographer, then you need to find a way that you both get what you're Absolutely. what you're doing and that it connects and you're all on the same yeah. wavelength and that that's where in your book for example you talk about the feel of things yes. and your values and what's important to you yeah so that's why you know you were talking about um we were talking off here earlier um <laughs> about couples giggling or holding hands or that sort of thing yeah so if they if they're holding hands chances are and that's really important to them they're both kinesthetic yeah okay Do you see yeah what that I mean? makes sense and so if they're a kinesthetic couple then it will all be about how they feel on the day and the photos capturing that feeling and then moving whereas you know the static poses probably doesn't resonate doesn't with resonate. them as much whereas yeah. visual people will want all of the backdrop to be perfect how they look what they look like yeah yeah that and so that, that's sense. where and um, Again, if they're auditory, they might want a movie with it or they want some soundtrack or at least to emanate the sounds of, you know, people laughing, for example, the pictures yeah. of them laughing, they will then fill in the gap with the sounds. Yes. Do you see what yeah, I mean? So even sense. though a picture is normally visual, actually they will want those other senses within that. And that's why the communication needs to be good and the photographer needs to communicate because um, to them myself or another photographer is just holding a camera yes. they don't see what i'm seeing they don't get the bits i'm cropping out they don't get that i'm getting the Absolutely. archery of the trees they don't know that they're yeah, on a yeah. third of a frame they're not in the middle they don't know Absolutely. that i can't see below you know i can't see their yeah. dirty shoes do you know what i mean Absolutely. they don't know that so you have to communicate and say you know i say don't worry about that i'm just i'm just doing it from you know waist up Absolutely. and i'll show them or I want you to stand there because the light's lovely in the background. Yeah. But if you don't tell them that, Absolutely. it's hard because they don't get it. They don't get it, what you want. And exactly. you can, you know, and even when you're, I mean, I don't overpose people anyway because it's not my style. But you, you do have to sort of help people yeah. a little bit to look their best. Um, put them with, where the light is and, and arrange them in a certain way. But again, just telling them, and I learned early on because I would say, yeah. you know, just put your arm up a bit and they do it. And I'm like... You were not like that. You look like an idiot <laughs> like that. But technically, they've done they've what done I've told what them to do. Told. So it's about modelling. I learned I had to model. Yeah. This is what this is what I'm talking this is about. This what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Because it, it is that how people 
Absolutely. Communicate. Yeah, so that's it really is. important. And I mean, even just like the bride going to t- try the dress on, if they're visual, it will be how they look. Whereas if they're kinesthetic, it will be how I mean, they feel. Yeah. In it. And if they're auditory, so my little bridesmaid, oh, she was so cute. Um, <laughs> Diddy, little three year old and the seven year old, they wanted to dizzy round, which basically spin on the to- on their toes. Okay. And it was the sound of the chiffon all moving, or, you know, oh, the fabric okay, that all moving love. that they love. They love the swish. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So that's where it's sort of. And, as I say, everybody will have a preference. Now, if your partner's preference is the same as yours, then actually that's nice and easy, right? Yeah. Because you're talking the same language anyway. And that's when your honeymoon period, you know, that lovely bubble rather than, rather than the holiday, <laughs> and can last ages without even any effort. Yeah. But that's the great news. If Even if it is different, so long as you know what the difference is, that's all you need to be thinking yeah. about rather than doing all of the five senses because yeah. that can be exhausting. That's so true. But and I think it's, I've seen that in clients, yeah. even like you say with a dress where it's, you know, some people will suffer to look good. They will have high heels or Absolutely. guys will wear like a tux even though it's not comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I'm visual, but there are certain things I don't wear. Like I'm, when I'm at a wedding, I look smart, but I don't yeah. usually wear a tie because I feel restricted. Yes. And if I feel yeah. restricted, I can't do my job. You can't do as well job. as I yeah. as I think I can. Exactly. So yeah, so in I different contexts. Yeah. Actually, you want to be feeling comfortable to be able to enable you to be creative. Um, yeah, 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 and make others it's feel comfortable. And I think yeah. that's I've said that loads of times. But a big part of my job is making people feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. think that's the starting point and of so a lot. And so, therefore, if you're a kinesthetic person, you would very much warm to you because it's about feeling. Yes, yeah. And actually, one thing I do, um, which kind of relates, but I, I had a pre-wedding shoot. I've had two this weekend. Um, and I never I never shoot straight away, and I never start near the car park or where we've just met. Yeah. So it's always a good 10, 15-minute walk. And I think sometimes I'm like, we didn't actually take many photos. And I'm like, no, but we walked. Yes. We relaxed and we talked. Absolutely. And we did lots of things before we actually took the photos. And, and people don't realise that that's what I'm yeah, doing. Absolutely. But I'm not just picking up a camera and snapping. So people feel real relaxed when they're in nature. You know, yeah. I get to see how they're interacting. Are they hugging? Are they not? Absolutely. Are they quite laughy and jokey? So in that 10, 15 minutes, it's you're, quite important You're interpreting what they want, what their natural style is, yeah. so that you can then reflect that in the photos. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what a good photographer does. Well, we hope <laughs> so. We, we hope so. so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. That's been fantastic. Perfect. So the last thing I'd like to do, because you're happily married. Oh, yes. You had a wonderful wedding. I did. <laughs> 20 years. It's our 20th wedding anniversary this year. Oh, congratulations. I, I just, That's the power of NLP, everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. I only look about 12. <laughs> she looks 12. She's happily married for 20 years. NLP is NLP the answer. NLP is the answer. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Brilliant. So, I wish someone had told me that before my wedding. What What yeah. do you wish somebody had told okay. you? Or one thing you would change? However, whatever, whatever. spin you yeah. want to put on to it. Be honest, the spin on it was actually something that somebody did tell me that I, to this day I am absolutely grateful for. Okay. So before my wedding day, somebody turned to me and said, the day will go really, really quickly. So quickly. So spend some time, make a conscious effort during the day to stop and to appreciate what's going on. Yeah, so we've had we, that going. keeps coming up keeps actually. Coming up. When I ask that question, that keeps coming Absolutely. up. It's really good that that's hitting home. You every know, time. Every because, time. And that's what I did. So during the, the wedding, I sort of stop and take a moment. And I can remember every single second of my wedding from forgetting my bouquet and making my dad run back to the house <laughs> to get it right the way through. So somebody told me beforehand, remember your bouquet may have been it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that should have been it. But. Stop, stop, you know, the moment, that moment, this was way before NLP days. I was so making sure everybody else was okay that forgot, I sort yeah. of forgot my own. Sort of, and grooms, yeah, yeah, forgot my own stuff. But to be honest, it made it funny um the video is classic <laughs> of like my dad running down the, the to to um come back to the um church with the bouquet and everything <laughs> so but i think that's the biggest thing as well you know what it's your day it's unique 
and actually what will be will be and enjoy it. Yeah. And just remember to enjoy every second. Yeah. And we and we've been talking about things you can do to feel calm and feel in control of how you feel. Yeah. Um but let let things be. Don't things be trying be. to control everything and Absolutely. trying to control how much fun people are having or you know just, just enjoy let yourself. it be. But just, but again yeah. with taking the time uh, you know, as I said, lots of people have said that to just yeah. look around and enjoy it. Enjoy that it. comes from planning as well and working with suppliers Absolutely. that factor in those times yeah. and respect the fact that, you know, you want 10 minutes before you go away for photos or exactly. you want some time after yeah. the speeches, you know. So it yeah. it all comes together. Sort and it of, doesn't even need to be long times. No. It could just be a second. I, I know that at one point I was like, I had my dad's hand and I was like... This is it. And it was just that moment of, yeah. oh my goodness, this was it. And I laughed all the way down the aisle. I heckled all the way through the, the service because we had a brilliant vicar. She was <laughs> hilarious. And we laughed the whole time and had the fa- most fabulous time. And people remember our wedding as a fabulous time. Yeah. Because if you're relaxed and having fun, then you're leading the way for everybody else yeah, to do that. That's you're very giving true. them permission. Yeah, people take their cues off you. Absolutely. They, do. they will that's take right. their cues off you and just give yourself some space the day before to chill out, yeah. to sleep, have a good night's sleep the day before, just so that, and once you get there, it's done. Yeah. Just enjoy. What will be, the will rest, be, like and, you said. And the yeah. rest is just part of your story. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Emma. You welcome. rounded that up perfectly. I'm sure you've done this before. We'll have, to, we'll have you back. We'll have you back. Oh, marvellous. <laughs> as long as there's lemon cake. Come. <laughs> so tell everyone how they can find out more about you, social media, websites, yeah. all that kind Okay, of thing. yeah. So as you know, Emma McNally, my company is called Achieve Your Greatness. So oh. Achieve Your Greatness. And that's what we do. So you can, um, basically the website is www.achieveyourgreatness.co.uk. UK, Lovely. you can contact me at emma.mcnally at so achieveyourgreatness.co.uk. <laughs> Funnily enough, <laughs> <laughs> just spell, spell McNally McNally M C N A L L Y McNally. No excuse, yes. no, not no being excuse. In touch. And as I say, I do everything from coaching right the way through to one day intros and through to full training. So if what we talked about today resonates at all and you want to learn more, you're curious, then we do courses um, based here in Chelmsford. Sunny old Chelmsford. Sunny Chelmsford. Chelmsford in Essex. Marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite sunny today, it to be fair. It is very sunny today. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. very nice. So, brilliant. Mm. Okay, as ever, I have been Ross Wilshire. You can find me at www.rosswilshirephotography.co.uk and like I say, every time in the same tone, I've noticed when I've <laughs> the book, How to Have a Wedding as Individual as You Are, is available now on Amazon UK online, Waterstones, Barnes and Noble. Um, and if you want a personalised signed copy. Oh, yes, or... I highly recommend it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very good. Very I'll good. pay you later. Very good. Um, yeah, you can email me info at rosswilshirephotography.co.uk. Um, and again, if you want to get in touch about anything wedding related or podcast related, that's how you can get hold of me. And I'm across all social media. So just look for Ross Wilshire Photography or at our Wilshire Photo because Twitter's always a little bit different. It's a funny one, isn't it? It limits what yeah. you can say. I'm not so, a fan of Twitter. No, because I'm at Emma, then a capital R and then McNally. So I just yeah. got the one capital in the middle. Not sure why. Yeah, my nice. But it's a bit weird. But you'll <laughs> find me. All our details are, you know, you've clicked on something to get here. So our exactly. names and stuff will be on exactly. there. So <laughs> brilliant. So thanks again, Emma. We'll be You're back welcome. very soon with another episode. But until then, happy wedding planning. Yeah. Enjoy your day.